It was like the shortest guy council. We're like best buds the entire time. So it's like this and then this. <laughs>
Number 484 with me. Actually, you know what? Miss Amy, I might have hit the wrong one on this. I don't know. Let me see if it is the next one over. That is not the correct one. Hold on one second. <laughs> I hit the wrong song. <laughs> um, if you go ahead and get your Bibles out, I know that. Choir, you can go ahead and come down. We're going to do a fun new song. Or not really a new song. That's what I did wrong. I wrote 484. It's 184. 184 with me. Go ahead and stand up together. Number 184. We're going to do a new look at the old book. We haven't done that one in quite a while. And so I'm actually going to get my Bible down here. Actually, this is someone else's Bible, but I just borrowed it. So anyway, <laughs> we're going to try it, all right? Number 184, we need a new look at the old book. Make sure you get your Bible out. Whenever we get to the phrase Bible or book or God's Word or Scripture, make sure you hold it up nice and high, okay? Here we go. Ready on 184? We need a new look at the old book. We need a new look at God's Word. There you go. We need to search the scriptures every day. I God's word in our hearts. We need a new look at the old book. We need a new look at God's word. Hey, that's pretty good. I think we can do a little bit better now that we're a little more prepared. Let's try to sing with all of our heart unto the Lord this evening. Ready? Here we go. We need a new look at the old book. We need a new There you go. We need to search the scriptures every day. I God's word in our heart. We need a new look in the old book. Good. There you go. Go ahead and turn around and shake someone's hand. Welcome them to church tonight.
as you're heading back to your seats, go ahead and get that Samba back out. If you lost your place, it's number 184. A new look at the old book. Make sure if you're, if you're just walking in, get your Bible out. We're going to do this really quickly. 184, we need a new look at the old book. Here we go. Ready? We need a new look at the old book. We need a new look at God's Word. We need a new look at the old book. We need a new look at God's Word. We need to search the Scriptures every day. I God's Word in our heart. We need a new look at the old book. We need a new look at God's Word. I tell you what, it's fun to watch Mr. Ray do it in the sound booth. It's great. <laughs> no, wonderful. Thank you so much. You may be seated. It's good to see some folks back with us tonight. They're here this morning. Lee and Deborah, right? I got it right. Wonderful. Thank you guys for coming back tonight. They are visiting from out of town. North Columbus, Ohio. Come down to visit and went through Colonial Williamsburg and all that. And, and we're just so glad you came to be part of us today with us. Amen. All right. So look at your bulletin. Next Sunday, big, 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 big Sunday, right? Okay. Choir practice during the this evening and come up with a great song hopefully for that Sunday. We're going to also have a special music group that's going to sing that Sunday. Um, we are still going to have t Sunday school at 10 o'clock, but we're going to stop. Sunday school teachers, listen to me. We're going to stop at 1040. 1040. And I really would like those choir members, if you have to, slip out. I'd like choir members back in Al's room at 1040. Okay, to go over the song, to be ready. And definitely want to make sure we're putting our best foot forward. Greeters, ushers, all that, ready at the door, ready to go, okay? Um, should be a great day. So make the folks feel welcome. I know you will. And, and just tell them, tell them something like, hey, I appreciate what you do. I appreciate what you're doing to keep us uh, safe here in our community, these first responders. They got a, they got a terrible uh, hit, if you please, by so many trying to defund the police and all this other garbage. Yes, it's garbage. Yes, it's garbage. I got one amen. Yes, it's garbage. And then they're finding in their cities crime skyrocketing. I wonder why. Because man and woman has an, a, an evil nature from within, and they need to be born again. The greatest thing that's going to help this country is, in the, is local churches getting the gospel out Amen. and getting folks saved. So keep witnessing. We're going to give you a chance and opportunity as we go along to give testimonies of soul winning opportunities that you've had. And then also maybe a testimony that uh, you want to give your testimony. So we'll be doing that soon. Um, Promise Seeker starting, is it this Wednesday? This Wednesday, right? Every Wednesday, 7 to 8, 15, 12 and under. So come on out, bring the young people for that. We are, we are, by the way, we are going to do a Hallelujah Festival this year yeah. on, on October 31st. It's our answer against Halloween, and we're going to call it Hallelujah Festival. It'll be games and all kind of activities here at the church, so we're looking forward to that. Um, evangelist, or excuse me, uh, Dr. Danny Whetstone. You have John, Dr. John O'Malley with Worldwide New Testament Baptist Missions. Well, his, his boss over him, or the guy over him, he's not really his boss, is Dr. Danny Whetstone. He's preached for us, a missions conference. He's going to be preaching revival services here in October. We'll have him. Byron Fox will be with us, with us the very first Sunday in December, all day. He'll be with us. So we've got sef several guest speakers coming in. Um, young people, don't forget the Junior Harvest Rally, the last Saturday of this month. Going over to the camp, they had 100 juniors last year. They're shooting for, what, 200 this year? Something like that. Praying for that, so pray with them about that. And then also the very next Saturday, the first Saturday in October, the Teen Harvest Rally. I think they had about 350 last year, and they're going to hopefully go more than that. It's an all-dayer at the camp for the young people, so it's a special time. If you know a young person, you'd like to see them under the sound of the gospel and be with other Christian young people, get them to go. Get them to go and have a, have a time there. I know they'll be blessed and God can touch their heart. Um, Miss Jackie's retirement ceremony this coming Friday. Uh, there'll be potluck afterwards, so folks, just bring 
potluck dishes, and they're going to, I think it's going to be a, a bouncy house out front for the kids. So it should be a nice time, and that's at 2 o'clock this coming Friday, okay? There is a sign-up list out on the foyer table, so if you're coming, let them know. It helps them better prepare for things, and, and I know she'll appreciate you being there to support her. Um, visitation this Tuesday and the next Tuesday. So terrific Tuesdays for the next two Tuesdays. Still have a lot of folks we can go back to and talk to and invite them back to church. We had several BBS families here this morning. Amen. Still getting folks coming back uh, over the, the Sunday, so praise God for that. Um, I think that's about it. Is that about it? Okay. Uh, oh, uh, talk to Ro Robert Spaulding. You know, Miss Janice had surgery this past Wednesday. Uh, he said she's doing well uh, with a knee replacement, and uh, she's had several replacements, two hip replacements, two knee replacements, and I think a shoulder or something issue. I said, Janice, I'm going to call you the bionic woman. That's what I'm going to do, too. But she's doing, she's doing very well. Pray for them. Next couple of weeks, they'll kind of be out of things. And uh, so I know their heart is to be here. Okay, I think that's about it, Gary. It's your turn. All right, go ahead and take your hymnals with me. You can stay seated for this one. Number three in your psalm book. Number three, we're going to do Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Number three in your psalm book, right near the beginning. Can I help you out there? All right. Number three, let's sing this with all of our hearts unto the Lord. Here we go. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune thy heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy ever ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, some by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus saw me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. Good, there you go. Would you go ahead and stand up with me? Let's do that third verse together. Stand up together on that third. Ready? Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to thee, the God I love. No, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Amen. You may be seated. Guys, if you'll go ahead and come at this time, we'll go ahead and do the offering. And then we will have one more song and a special tonight. And then Brother Daniel's going to be preaching for us tonight. We're very excited about that. Um, we had a wonderful afternoon. I got a nap this afternoon. Praise the Lord. But guys, who's praying this afternoon? Brother Ryan? Amen.
All right, go ahead and stand up one more time with me. Turn number two, and then instead of Mr. number three, we're going to do number two. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. I love this song. It's probably one of my favorite songs in the hymnal. Number two in your song, but let's sing with a smile unto the Lord this evening. Here we go. Holy, holy, holy. last verse holy 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 lord god almighty all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea holy 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 merciful and mighty god in three persons blessed trinity can you imagine the angels just crying this out to the father and to the son and the holy ghost I, it's just i can't wait to be in heaven with jesus and get to praise him before him let's do this fourth verse everything we have under the lord tonight Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, all thy work shall reside in, in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. I love that song. You may be seated. Amy and I are going to try to sing a special tonight. It's simply called Acquainted with Grace. He was acquainted with the splendor of heaven Surrounded by the angels who worshipped him Yet he longed to have someone he could give his love to So in his own image he created man one day man failed him in the garden fellowship was broken because of sin but from the beginning the father knew what he would do 
He'd send His own Son to bring us back to Him. He became acquainted with grief so I could be acquainted with grace. He suffered like no other did, the Lamb of God, He knew no sin. He was acquainted with grief, so I could be acquainted with grace. He came unto His own, but was rejected. The Son of God had nowhere to lay His head. Brought before the mob to be condemned or set free, yet they chose a criminal instead. He walked the lonely road to Golgotha, what shame and reproach my Savior bore. Oh, he could have walked away, but in love he took the cross. For I was the one that he was dying for. He became acquainted with grief. So I could be acquainted with grace. He suffered like no other did. The Lamb of God, He knew no sin. He was acquainted with grief. So I could be acquainted with grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. He suffered like no other did, the Lamb of God, He knew no sin. He was acquainted with grief, so I could be acquainted with grace. We're going to get our Bibles open here in just a bit, but I'm going to kind of open this message with something I've never really done before in a message, but I want to get it focused. I want to get us focused on what our topic is. So raise your hand if you're at Vacation Bible School. All right, good. So I got some help here. Uh, We're going to talk about waiting on the Lord and keeping our minds on the Lord. So what better way to do that than sing the song, Jesus, 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 I've got them on my mind. So go ahead and sing that with me, if you will. Okay, here we go. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. What about going to Walmart? Okay, here we go. When I go to Walmart, I've got him on my mind. When I go to Walmart, I've got him on my mind. When I go to Walmart, I've got him on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. All right, where should we go? When I go to sleep, when I go to sleep, I've got him on my mind. 
When I go to sleep, I've got them on my mind. When I go to sleep, I've got them on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. I just want to get y'all thinking about keeping the Lord on your mind. Okay, because even those silly songs that we sing as kids, that carries a great meaning for us. And, uh, you know, we had adults there at Vacation Bible School. They were, they were getting down with that song when Chase was up there singing it. We probably sang that three or four times a morning uh, when he was here um, during there. So we, we've gone over that probably 25 times at least. But now I remember the words, and I'm the most horrible person at remembering the words to a song. Well, get that in our minds. She said, yes. <laughs> My wife is honest. She is the most beautiful, honest person I know. <laughs> we are going to talk about keeping our minds on the Lord, and I have a great example that uh, God has shown me. I'm kind of uh, stuck on that and trying to figure out why He showed me this until I'm looking, and it's like, wow, this, this uh, applies to us directly in this time of day, in this time of this season of life that we're in, this season of time. Uh, Funny thing is it applied to them in their season of time as well. Isn't it great? Humans anywhere through time, this applies to us. Okay. Now, we have to keep focused for a few different things. And i got to tell you, I was kind of nervous about this one date coming up, September 9th. Miss Jackie's not here. Is she at the house? Okay. Yeah, at the house with Carter. But she's got this ceremony coming up where I was graciously invited to wear this most uncomfortably designed piece of clothing ever made. All right. I have to wear my dress uniform that I haven't really worn for more than two years. And I think the last time I've actually wore it was when I retired. And so retired mode kicks in. And with retired mode, um, well, life goes on. My kids are growing up. Uh, their skills are exploding, and now I have people baking baked goods all over the place in the house. And after two years, it was kind of showing. Well, I had to get my focus. I had to, um, I had to get something in my mind for every day for three weeks. And, you know, we started doing the salad thing. We didn't have any candy, uh, didn't have any pizza, didn't have any of that. Okay, we just had meat and salad and eggs. Of course, it was great, all right? That's kind of all you need. You can leave the salad, but, you know, eggs and bacon and, and chicken, all right? But the salad was just a filler, okay? That way you don't keep on going back and spending. Bacon's expensive. You pay too much money that way. But we were doing that, and it was showing. It was, it was uh, showing improvement, and I'm looking at, uh, looking at things this morning, and when I put my belt on, I'm like, this is not my belt. I have it all the way cinched down, and it's still kind of loose. Maybe that actually helped. Maybe keeping my mind on that goal was resulting in a beneficial uh, objective being accomplished. Okay, keeping your mind on that goal. So what I want to talk to you about is uh, why wait on something in particular? Why wait on the Lord? If you want to go to Exodus chapter 32 with me. We will uh, focus on this story of the children of Israel here at Exodus chapter 32. And I want you to hang out right there, and uh, we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that you've given us, and thank you for giving us the ability to uh, just hear your word and just be changed by you. And Lord, I pray that you please would remove any, any sense of the words that I want to say and that I want to do, and, and Lord, would you please just have it to be yours. Thank you so much for... Uh, for saving me, and thank you so much for giving me this, uh, this passage of Scripture, Lord. I pray that you please bless. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So in Exodus chapter 32, this is a pivotal, pivotal moment in the lives of the children of Israel. In your backstory throughout this book of Exodus, Exodus, it kind of pictures our salvation experience. If you've ever read the book of Exodus and studied it through, it starts off from the children of Israel being removed from Egypt. And when you were saved, you were removed from the penalty of sin, you were removed from the slavery of sin, and you were placed in freedom. You were placed in Christ. In this case, we're looking back at real written history. The children of Israel were removed through supernatural forces that happened. God removed them, and God punished the, the people of Egypt for rejecting the Lord. 
Well, they were removed from the country, they were removed from slavery, removed from bondage, and put on the road towards the promised land. And when you were saved, you were put on the road towards the promised land, towards heaven. You can't get off that road. That's a great thing. I don't want to take, a, I don't want to take an exit off that road. I want to stay where I'm going. Further on into the book, we find that now the children of Israel, they have to depend on God to feed them. They have to depend on God for uh, water so that they can drink. Now, we have to depend on God for our own spiritual meat, our own spiritual drink. It directly reflects to what they went through. And whenever they did not look to the Lord for their spiritual meat, for their spiritual drink, in this case, the actual quail and manna and water that they needed to eat. Now, bring up quail because quail tastes good. All right, we have quail at our house. If you didn't know, we'll make some for you. But they had to depend on God to provide that sustenance. And it, uh, it was a miraculous thing. They said, Lord, we need you. And God provided not only did they have to have food and water, they had to have protection. As they were journeying through the promised land, there was a most hated enemy of Israel called Amalek. And Amalek came and attacked them from behind, trying to hit them at the weakest point of their convoy. Isn't it weird how sin does that to you? The Satan will try to attack you at your weakest moment, at your weakest place. Well, God had to protect them, and they had to accept that protection from the Lord. So now we have... Salvation. We have removal from the bondage of sin. We have them placed on the road towards the promised land. We have the people of Israel trusting for spiritual food, for spiritual drink, for protection from the Lord. And now we meet the Lord to find out His statutes. We meet the Lord to find out His law. And how do we do that today? Well, we have this great book right here. And that is how we find out what the Lord has to say to us. They get there about Exodus chapter 19, and for the next several chapters up through Exodus chapter 32, they are at Mount Sinai meeting with the Lord. And in particular, Moses is on top of Mount Sinai for about seven solid chapters in the book, hearing from the Lord on how they need to serve the Lord. Now, we can't spend too much time in learning how to serve the Lord. We can't. Now, you have a stereo in your car, correct? You can play MP3s, you can do Bluetooth connected to it, CD player... All right, some of y'all still have cassette, de uh, cassette decks in your car. Do they still work? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you remember the eight-track players? I, I don't. <laughs> but you have that, and, well, just resources for you, for you to, hey, I can put good word into my ear, and I can learn about the Lord. There are plenty of podcasts out there you can uh, download, you can hook up on Spotify, you can hook up on several other websites and apps and stream them into your car from your phone. And if you don't know how to do that, then you can always just order on CD and put it in your CD player. Or if you're old school, get a tape. We actually have several recordings back here of sermons. And you can use those. Anyway, several different options for you to continue to learn about the Word of the Lord. Continue to learn about what God has for you. This was the most intense period of education that the children of Israel had yet. They were learning from the Lord exactly what they should, uh, they should be doing. Sadly, when we look at their life at this chapter that we're going to go through, it reflects ours. Now, there's some certain characters here. Exodus chapter 32, we're going to look at this. I'm going to read you the first six verses. If you will with me, go there. Verse number one, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, and of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off their golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation, and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord." And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Here in Exodus chapter 32, we leave people or we, we see the people here are left to wait. Now we wonder, what does it mean to wait? Well, when you tell your kids, wait, 
Sometimes it's just a one word statement that just all encompasses tells them to just be quiet and sit still. That is one thing that you can do with your kids. Does it work? If you train them, yes. All right. If not, they're going to go do whatever. But it, that is one thing that we would do. If we're focused on something, we say wait, and they have to sit there and be quiet and wait for you to come back to them. When we're talking about the word wait, there's several different applications for this word, wait on the Lord, or wait on this, or wait on that. Sometimes when the Bible, in the Bible, someone says wait here or tarry here, it does physically mean stay right where you're at. Other times, when it says wait, it's talking in a sense of wait on the Lord or wait on your master or wait on your calling or wait on your ministry. That means I want to sit here where I am called and fully devote myself to serving this ministry or serving my Lord or serving my master. There's several examples that we're going to get into. There's others lying in wait for somebody. There's several people in the Bible all through the Old Testament. Throughout the New Testament, the people have done it to Paul lying in wait. They are waiting for one single purpose, waiting for someone to come by so they can accost them, so they can attack and they can mug or whatever you want to call it. There are several applications for the word wait here, but in this case, when we say wait on the Lord, we can kind of wrap up all three of them together. We say wait on the Lord. What is that telling us? Well, God was wanting the children of Israel to sit there at the mountain and focus and learn on him. He was wanting them to practice uh, prayer, wanting them to practice uh, offerings. He was wanting them to practice being together and supporting one another. And all of this just keeps their minds focused on the Lord. It keeps their minds focused off of Egypt. They recently got out of Egypt. I mean, it's not been years and years and years. It's been very, very recent. They went from bleak, dark bondage, and now they're sitting in front of the mountain where God is standing and talking to Moses. When we say wait on the Lord, we need to wait and we need to fully engage in the opportunity to serve the Lord. I know we talked about this several times, serving the Lord, putting your life into serving the Lord, but I'm going to bring it back again because there is a great example of what not to do and how you can not serve the Lord in this passage as well. I want to, I want to keep us focused because the point of this here is, yes, I want to tell you that you can serve the Lord. I want to tell you how you can serve the Lord. But I also want to tell you to not stop serving the Lord because there is consequences. There are consequences in stopping your service to the Lord. We need to lie and wait for every opportunity that God opens up to us to serve the Lord. And we're going to go over a few examples of that. So all three of those, yes, it includes service to the Lord. When we look at the children of Israel, they... They had a choice, but they made a choice to serve themselves instead of God. When we look at Exodus chapter 32, again, look at there with me. Verse number four, it talks about making golden calves. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And look at the world's religious systems at that time. You had the Egyptians. They were covered in gods that they worshipped. They had a bull god named Apis or Apis. That could have been where they figured out how to make a golden calf or a golden cow. They probably saw it all the time in Egypt. There was a Canaanite god. You probably heard of this guy named Baal. He is sometimes represented as a bull. And they made a golden statue. All of these represent, I am turning back to the Lord, or turning back to the world. I'm not going to serve the Lord anymore. I'm turning back to the world. Can anyone tell me what Egypt would represent if you were going to take it in a, uh, in a picture sense in the Bible? What's Egypt represent? Um, Eli? The world. the world. Exactly. It represents the world. God took them out of the world. He took them out through supernatural power and put them on the path to righteousness. And when they were told to wait, they didn't want to wait any longer. So they're turning back to where they came from. Sometimes we do that in our service to the Lord. God puts us on a path and we know we're on the path and we know we're doing the right thing. And all of a sudden we get tired of it because maybe our timing doesn't work out with God's timing. And so we start to turn back to where we came from. See, there is no parked Christian, folks. There is either a Christian that is going forward or a Christian that is going back. There's a term backsliding in the Bible. It's like you're going uphill. It's always hardest to fight uphill, isn't it? Well, it's easy when God's carrying it uphill. That means you don't have to walk. But when you're not going with the Lord anymore, there's no more uphill travel. There's no more forward progress. There's only backwards. There's only a descent. 
So as these people of Israel, they didn't want to serve the Lord anymore, what was their only option? They were going to turn back. They started serving Apis. They started serving Baal. They started saying, we're going to have sacrifices to them. And what better way to do it than we're just going to have a big old party. And that's what they did. And they were getting ready to pack up their bags and go back to Egypt while Moses was up there finishing up the most uh, awesome conversation that anyone has ever had with God. And it wasn't because they didn't see God. They had every opportunity to serve the Lord. Not only did they see all of these ten plagues done uh, on Egypt, not only did they see food and water miraculously provided in the, in the desert, not only did they see miraculous defense against Amalek when they were traveling through the promised land, not only did they see this great firestorm on top of the mountain when God descended on top of Mount Sinai, God had called the elders of Israel along with Aaron and Moses, and he called them up towards the mountain. And I want you to look at this here. Go to Exodus chapter 24, if you will, with me. Bring up all these examples to you, because when we look at not serving the Lord, when we look at, oh, that's never going to happen to me. Ooh, don't ever, don't ever say that. Don't say that or you could find yourself in that situation. Peter said that himself and he ended up denying God and cursing like the sailor that he was three times before he caught himself. So Exodus chapter 24, look in verse 12 with me. And the Lord said to Moses, come up unto me, uh, come up to me in the mount and be there and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said to the elders, tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. <clears throat> okay, I picked out the wrong scripture there. My apologies. All right, going down to, uh, going back up to 9 and 10. Verses 9 and 10. Then went Moses, then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. Now stop right there. They saw the God of Israel. They walked up there and they saw him. Not only did they hear him, not only did they see his power, not only did they hear his voice, but they saw the God of Israel. And under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness, in his clearness, they saw the God of Israel. What greater proof did they have then? They didn't have any greater proof. They had a conversation with the Lord. They saw the Lord right there. This is Israel's leadership. So what better way to make sure that the people of Israel were to follow the Lord than to take the leadership of Israel up to the mountain and see God himself after hearing the Lord speak from the top of the mountain? I mean, we're just stacking proofs on top of proofs on top of proofs right here on why we should serve the Lord, because there is a real God. And now the Bible tells us, just like we've heard uh, this morning, that we have a more sure word of prophecy. Now, if you can get more sure than God himself standing on the mountain with a clear sapphire pavement underneath him and. I don't know what the right word is, a calamitous firestorm up on top of the mountain because of his power when he steps down on it, we have a more sure assurance. Right here. Can you imagine that the pages of this book right here hold more power and hold more assurance than all of that that they saw on the mountain? And throughout their time in Egypt going into the promised land? Well, it does. But why do we stop serving the Lord? Why do we stop waiting on Him? We are no different than they are. No different than they are. The same Spirit that was sitting there on that mountain, the same God, is the same spirit that's living in your heart right now. All right, the only difference is he was up there in the mountain and God's in our hearts right now. We still have the choice whether we want to serve him or not every day. So remember that song, Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. How often do we have the Lord on our mind? And how often do we take him off of our mind and put it on something else? That's what we're looking at. Because that is the difference between you serving the Lord and waiting on the Lord versus serving yourself. There's different kind of waitings. I already told you about that. Jacob, Jacob said in Genesis chapter 49, verse 18, I waited on thy salvation, O Lord. 
He was patiently expecting the salvation that God was going to provide. Naaman's servant girl. You all remember Naaman's servant girl? She was taken in, in one of the raids. She was now in the captivity. And Naaman, this famous general, was, a, was a, um, a leper. He was infected with leprosy. And Naaman's servant girl said, Oh, that my Lord would go see this prophet in Israel. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 2, when the Syrians had gone out by companies, they brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. This little girl waited on this general's wife. Every day she served her, and she saw it was a great opportunity to tell her about the Lord. Different kinds of waiting. There was a man with a 38-year infirmity there in the book of John. We learn about him in chapter 5. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk talking about this big pool that they're surrounding, or that there's porches surrounding by. There's a big pool right here. And he was one of these great multitude of impotent folk. They were blind and withered and halt, meaning they can't get up, they can't hear, they can't see. They have all kinds of physical ailments. And what this pool, this pool did was God would send an angel to trouble the waters. And the first one to get into that pool would get healed of their ailments. And so what did this man with the infirmity do? He waited on that pool. Now, that does seem kind of a weird thing. You're waiting on something that's not going to move. This is the other sense of the word wait. I am focused on this pool. I'm watching this pool. My attention is on this pool. Is your attention on the Lord? Is your focus on the Lord? Are you waiting on the Lord? That's a daily thing because he didn't know when that water was going to get troubled. It could have been two in the morning. It could have been three in the afternoon. It could have been two days later. It could have been five times a day. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But if you're not focused on it, you're not going to be able to get in it. He was waiting on the pool. The scribes and the Pharisees, you remember this, they lay in wait for him. They tried to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. It says there in Luke chapter 11, they waited in wait. They lied in wait. They were looking for an opportunity. In this case, they were looking for an opportunity against the Lord. But are you looking for opportunities to serve the Lord that God would bring up to you? Are you laying in wait for opportunities to witness to somebody? Are you laying in wait for opportunities to fill the gap like the sign that we used to have up here on the wall? Are you lying in wait for opportunities that God would provide? You're not going to be able to see those come if you're not focused on the Lord every day. You're not. It's unclear. I'm going to tell you that right now. It is unclear how long these people were waiting, on top, or waiting by the mountain before they decided to say, oh, we waited too long. It is unclear. But we do know that it's within a 40-day period because Moses was only on top of the mountain for 40 days. He was only on top of Mount Sinai 40 days. But they had no excuse. Like I said, they saw the Lord. They heard the Lord. They saw His power. But they made the choice. They were the first ones. All those elders, they were the first ones that should have said, people, we're going to sit here and we're going to focus. We're going to wait on Moses because he said that he was coming back. Well, 32, they, or chapter 32, they figured they waited long enough. Those of y'all that say, and I'm talking to myself too, that there is no way that I'm going to turn back from serving the Lord. There is no way that I am going to leave my calling and what God has wanted me to do, my pride could get up and I could start serving myself and not even know it. That's a danger. We have to be focused on the Lord every day. When we think that we are too good, we're focused on ourselves. When we think we've mastered it all, we focus on ourselves. In Luke chapter 9, verse 62, Luke 9, verse 62, Jesus said unto him, looking at someone who asked him uh, if he could come with him, he said, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is, looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We also see a few more of these warnings in the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews was written to uh, Jews that believed, and there were a lot of Jews that God was writing to that didn't yet believe. They were on the fence. Do I stay with Judaism or do I go with Christianity? Do I stay with the law or do I go with salvation in Christ? And there were warnings in the book of Hebrews directed towards these Jews saying, don't wait too long. If you come and you hear about the Lord, if you come and you hear about salvation, but you say, I'm not going to serve Him, there, there is no other recompense for sin. There's no other sacrifice for sin than what you are turning away. You need to wait on the Lord. 
We do. We need to wait on the Lord. So, can we mess up? Can we turn away? Yeah, we can. It can happen to anyone. But when we focus on serving the Lord, there's great opportunities and there's great rewards on, on waiting on the Lord. It requires a daily choice. Are you serving the Lord today? Great. Are you going to do it tomorrow? Well, I'm going to make sure I do that tomorrow. Tomorrow rolls around. I'm serving the Lord. Great. Am I going to do that Tuesday? Well, Tuesday, I'm going to tell myself I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to focus on Him. We take it day by day by day. Day by day by day. It requires a constant service, a consistent service. A daily service, daily choices, consistent service. Remember Simeon in Luke chapter 2? We're going through the birth of Christ and going through uh, what's called the advent of Christ, his appearing on earth. And Jesus Christ shows up. He is born in a manger. And through it all, he gets pre presented at the temple like the firstborn was supposed to. And there is a man named Simeon. Luke chapter 2 and verse 25, it says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Notice right there, his focus was he was waiting on the consolation of Israel. He was waiting on someone that was going to come and tie it all together. And he was there every day. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do to him after the custom of the law, then he took him up his arms and he blessed there is a great opportunity when you serve the Lord. You see, Simeon right here, he was consistent. He was long-suffering in it. Sometimes it didn't seem like, now this is only my opinion, but it didn't seem like any of this would happen for a long, long time. The Bible talks about him being a really old dude. He wasn't going to die until he had seen Jesus come. What would happen if he said, I don't, I don't think he's going to come. I'm I'm just going to go. I'm going to start like a Chick-fil-A franchise. I'm, I'm going to do something else. What would happen if he turned away from the Lord, turned away from waiting in the temple and waiting on people and went to serve himself because he felt, I'm tired of it. He wouldn't have got that blessing. And there are so many people that get a blessing from this passage today, 2,000 years later, that I don't think would have gotten that blessing if he decided to turn around and serve himself. When we look at Paul, Acts chapter 17, I want you to turn there with me because I love this story. Acts chapter 17, again, different kinds of waiting. We pointed out there's different ways, to, uh, different ways to use this word, but they all have to do with our service for the Lord. Acts chapter 17 and verse number 13. I want you to go there with me. Acts 17 and verse 13. Great rewards in waiting on the Lord. Great rewards. I want you to remember that. There's great rewards in your consistent service. Acts 17, verse 13 tells us, But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go, as it were, to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for them to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens... His spirit was stirred up in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Now he's waiting in Athens. Literally, he is just there waiting for these guys to show up. So what's he decided to do? I'm just going to go sightseeing. Y'all ever done that before? Ever went on vacation before? You ever went just downtown to look at the, look at the shops? That's something I like to do when we were up in Oregon. And uh, southern Washington is we go to this old town. It looks like old Smithfield. It's a place known as the Dalles, Oregon. And when you go through there, they have all these old storefronts and everything. Everything is closed on a Sunday. It's, it's such a great little town. Most ungodly town ever, but everything is closed on a Sunday. So I guess it's pretty old fashioned. But you drive down the roads and it's so cool looking. They got great buildings and well, after service, there's really nothing else to do but, you know, eat and go home and, and relax. So we go through and we just drive down the town a little bit. Look at Paul. He's just literally waiting for people to show up. So what's he do? He goes sightseeing through the city. But God stirs him up. And he's focused on the Lord. He's probably thinking to himself, 
what are these people doing? They, do they know the Lord? What are these people doing? Do they, do they know that this is wrong, that this is wicked? What are these people doing? And as he's there waiting, he could say, well, what do they have to sell here? I mean, I'm hungry. Do they have like cool food here? Do they have, oh man, those wraps? Do they, I wonder if they had those wraps right there with the lamb and, and stuff in them. I mean, it's grease, right? Probably not. Okay. Well, I would, I would hope that they did. He could have been focused on something else, but he's focused on the Lord. And when he was focused on the Lord, he saw all this where the Lord wasn't there and it stirred him up and it put him into service. You remember lying in wait for an opportunity? This was that opportunity that, that God set in front of Paul that he was going to lie in wait for. Therefore, he disputed, verse number 17, in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the markets daily with them that met with him. And certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? And others, uh, other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him into Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, and we would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else than to tell or to hear some new thing. Can you imagine that? They're doing nothing else, but hey, you got any new news? And they hear this guy telling these weird things that they've never heard, any, they've never heard before, and let's get him up here. We want to hear this guy. I haven't heard anything this new for a while. So he gets up there, and remember, he's lying in wait for an opportunity. And Paul says, okay, I've seen enough. Let's talk. Verse number 22, Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For I passed by and beheld your devotions, and I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. That opportunity opened the door to Paul, and he stepped through, and he preached Jesus. And all he was supposed to do was wait in Athens for two people to show up. Can you see what kind of opportunities show up when you have Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? Got Jesus on my mind. How much are we going to keep the Lord on our minds? Go down to verse number 32, if you're still there in Acts 17 with me. Verse number 32 says, And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him, and believed. Among them, which was Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So not only did Paul think of the Lord, not only did Paul obey that leading of the Holy Spirit, he took advantage of this opportunity that God provided. He preached and people got saved. And not only did people got saved, they followed Paul in discipleship with him. And you see what happens when we keep our mind on the Lord? It's more than just a silly song. Jesus, 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 got Jesus on my mind. Well, do you really have Jesus on your mind? I hope you do. We make it a nice little song that people can remember, nice, nice rhymes, but there's a lesson to it. When we have Jesus on our mind and we're serving him and we're waiting on the Lord, there are great rewards that can happen. And Paul just earned himself some crowns. David in Psalm 27, verse number 14, he says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And again, in Psalm 69, it says, Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. You know, the Lord just really wants your attention. The Lord doesn't care if you're the most talented person out there. He doesn't care if you're the tallest, if you're the strongest. We saw that with... King Saul, who ended up being a failure. We saw that with uh, Samson, who he could have done a whole lot better. He was like the biggest and the strongest. God can use anyone. It doesn't matter who you are. All he wants you to do is wait on him. Again, when we say wait, that doesn't mean you sit here stuck, rooted in place, denying all change. 
When we say wait on the Lord, we mean I'm focused on him. I'm following his leading. If he's not telling me to go anywhere, I'm going to serve him where I'm at. If he's telling me to go somewhere, I'm going to serve him as I go. If I'm waiting on him, if I am serving him, I'm going to look for opportunities to serve him. And that's where the rewards are going to come. I'm going to go to Acts chapter 1. Go there with me. Acts chapter 1. Heard about Simeon. Heard about Paul. Heard about David. Luke and Peter. And they have, a, they have something to say as well. Acts chapter 1 and verse 1 tells us, The former treatise I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to, both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Do you guys know what's going to happen here coming up? Just in very recent days, in this time period, there's an amazing event that's going to happen. Jesus just got crucified, rose again, and now he's on earth for 40 days showing himself. Again, wait on the Lord. Where was Thomas that first time? Not in church. And he missed out on a blessing. He wasn't with the disciples that were praying. But then again, he showed up the next time. He would have got that blessing eight days earlier if he was waiting on the Lord. But because, like the children of Israel in Exodus 32, he said, I've waited long enough. He missed out seeing Jesus for that first time with the rest of the disciples in that room. We miss out on our blessings, folks. Verse number 13 in Acts chapter 1, And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James, and John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, you see, he's there now. Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James, they all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. They're waiting on the Lord. They're all together in prayer and supplication. They're taking care of one another. What do we do in the New Testament church? We are a local body that support one another. We lift each other up. We encourage one another, we edify one another, and we all together, in our own separate calling, our own separate ways, get out there and spread the gospel and try to bring more people into the fold. And that's what we do. When you don't wait on the Lord, there is something that's going to be lacking there. What if the topic of the sermon that Thomas missed was something that he would have actually needed to have in his life? Can we imagine that? You know, I've, unless I ask pastor what he's going to preach on a Sunday... I don't know what he's going to preach. And then sometimes pastor will ask me, well, what are you preaching on? Other than that, if I'm up here, pastor doesn't really know what I'm going to preach. So if that's the case, unless you talk to one of us before we get up there and preach, you don't know what we're going to bring out. You don't know what scripture, what topic, what application we're going to have. Do you want to miss something that you need? I hope the answer is no. So how do you fix that? You're in church. Whenever the Bible is open, whenever the word is given, we're waiting on the Lord. And that includes your own personal edification as well. Your own personal building up. Your own personal sharpening. Sharpening. Don't miss something. Don't be a Thomas. Be there for the Lord. We're still here in the book of Acts, but I want to bring you to Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Again, waiting on the Lord. Again, Focused on the Lord. They're all doing it together, focused on the Lord. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What if you missed that meeting? That would not be the meeting that you would want to miss if you were alive in that time and you were a believer. You see what happens when you don't take advantage of opportunities? You see what you can miss? When you don't make it a point to get to where the Bible is preached, where the Word of God is taught, 
and you don't make it a point to get there, you see what we miss? I don't know what kind of blessings that were in store for the children of Israel in Exodus 32, but I'll let you go ahead and read the rest of that chapter. Because it didn't end well for a lot of them that decided to go and party with this golden cow statue. They decided to turn back from the Lord. It doesn't end well for us. I mean, we probably won't get chopped up and thrown in a river. We probably won't get swallowed up by ground or whatever's going to happen. But we, uh, we had kind of a little wake-up call. I'm not going to tell you the whole story of what happened with this, um, uh, with this pastor's fellowship I went to. Uh, but the point of this little tidbit of this story is there are some people that are concerned about people that are lost and dying and going to hell. And it should be all of us. And when we're not focused on that, people are still going to be lost and dying and going to hell when we could be going out and reaching out to them. All right, that wasn't the issue that we had. It wasn't because we, people weren't uh, concerned about the lost. We were actually focused on another topic for that day. But it was a wake-up call. How many of us are concerned every day about lost people? How many of us are concerned every day about people getting saved? Lord, it's Monday tomorrow. Wake up in the morning. Lord, it's Monday. You got anyone for me to talk to? The next day, Lord, it's Tuesday. You got anyone for me to talk to? Wednesday. You want me to reach anybody today? What if Thursday you forget to ask and Thursday you don't care and there happens to be someone that walks by that needed to talk to you? You know, Thomas missed that church service. He missed out on a blessing. The children of Israel, in Exodus chapter 32, they turned away from serving the Lord and ended up in idolatry. And they really missed out on a blessing. I don't want you to miss out on a blessing. I want you to wait on the Lord. I want to wait on the Lord. Look for opportunities to serve Him. Keep your mind focused on Him and please Him and not yourself. Wait on the Lord. We're going to go ahead and we're going to stop right there, but I want to give you opportunity. We have an old-fashioned altar. And here at this time, you don't have to come down here, but I encourage you to do so. There's just something special about getting up and making a movement and bringing something to the Lord. You see, the Bible talks about if we have anything odd against our brother and we, uh, we don't take care of that, we're supposed to leave our gift at the altar and then go to our brother and take care of that and then come and offer our gift. You see, there's something that we take that we want to leave with the Lord. Do you have anything that you need to leave with the Lord? It could be missed opportunities. It could be, well, I, uh, I should have focused more on that, but I didn't. It could be, well, I should have talked to that person that you put on my heart, but I didn't. It doesn't have to be all negative, though. You know what you can do? Like Hannah that was waiting on the Lord to open up her womb so she can have a baby. Lord, can you give me this blessing? Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, please give me more, more to serve you. It could be anything like that. If you're a soul that's looking for something more from the Lord then now's the time to come down and now's the time to do business with the Lord. I think Amy's going to play. We're just going to give opportunity for you just talk to the Lord. Think of how you're going to serve Him. Think of how you're going to take advantage of opportunities.
All right, if you would, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to have your word open. And Lord, thank you for showing us what you have to show us. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for just, you, uh, you have a plan for us. And sometimes we don't understand what that fully is, but your plan is just a really day-by-day -day plan. And it makes it so much simpler that way, Lord. Thank you so much for it. Pray that you help us with this, Lord. Help us to just live for you each and every day. Lord, would you gently remind us to serve you each and every day and help us to take advantage of those opportunities. Lord, I pray that you please would forgive me for where I've fallen and failed. And Lord, help us to be able to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Daniel. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, okay.